Okay. Hello and welcome to the January 2023 demo of the Society of West Coast Artists. My name is Jim Stinger and I am the president of the San Francisco chapter of the Society of West Coast Artists. We are a volunteer run organization. We have our own gallery in San Bruno on San Mateo Avenue. We invite you to come visit, see the current show. It's uh, got a lot of good paintings in it. And of course, we're always looking for new members. So if you aren't a member, please consider joining. And you can go to our website, societyofwest-coastartists.com, and you'll find membership information there. So it is our pleasure today to have a demo by Jan Prisco, who is a pastel artist. And I'd like to read from her biography on her website to introduce her. I create paintings of California in oil and pastel and living on the San Francisco Peninsula provides me with so many beautiful options to paint. My favorite place to do this is in nature, especially at the Pacific Ocean, where I strive to represent the power and beauty of the ocean in my paintings. I am a little addicted, frankly, to painting the drama of waves and the healing, cleansing connection that the ocean provides to us. I've spent hours at the coast just being quiet, studying wave movement, and taking photos, which I sometimes need to finish these paintings due to the constant movement of my subject. My collectors have told me that when they look at my wave paintings, they can feel the ocean air and the sound of the waves crashing. That makes me super pleased. Experiencing nature personally, whether listening to the breaking waves of the Pacific or enjoying the light playing on the leaves of a California oak, creates a feeling of connection and contentment. Painting on site in the open air is notoriously challenging. The light changes, the sea moves, the trees sway in the wind. It is there that I find peace, presence, and enjoyment. My goal is to bring those feelings and lasting memories to others through my paintings. Jan Prisco is a pastel and oil painter who <coughs> focuses on paintings of the San Francisco Peninsula to Big Sur. Most of her paintings are begun plein air. Her work can be viewed online at www.janprisco.com and www.portolaartgallery.com. So please, well, before we act, before we actually start, I want to make sure that those of you on Zoom can hear what I'm saying. <coughs> uh, is the audio working for you? Sorry. Can you, okay, unmute yourself and let us know. Yes, I can hear you. Does anybody hear the audio? Yes, we do. Yes, you can hear it. No? Yes, I can hear it. Audio problems. Yes, we can hear it. Can you hear? Yes, all good on the audio. Now. I'm not getting any feedback from we are the we can hear you, Jim. Participants on Zoom with regard to the audio. Is the yeah. audio working? Yes. I have something in chat. Let's check that. Yes, audio is good. Okay. That's all the feedback that I needed. Thank you. So we will proceed then. Uh, let me just, yes, okay. All right. So um, I'd like to present Jan Prisco for her demo. Thank you so much, Jan. Thank you. And hopefully you can all hear me. Uh, I'm Jan. I'm Cameron is over there. Yes, there you go. <laughs> now you got it. <laughs> Uh, I've been working in pastels for about 12 or 13 years, and I really, 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 really enjoy them very much. 
And um, lately, even though I have, I did the community manager the last stage around the, the community, um, I've been focusing a lot on um, seascapes and wavescapes. I love doing them, they're really fun. Scale is an excellent medium. So today, I'm actually going to be working on a couple of pieces um, for you. The first one, I'm going to start from scratch. I've actually painted from this photo um, multiple times, and both of the paintings have, uh, have found new homes. So I'm going to create a third painting um, to go with the show. Sorry, Jake was blood. I have four of the art gallery. All and I love this one because of the vibrancy of color, movement, and, and the greenness of it. So I'm going to start this one from scratch um, and then I'm going to be my I'm going to work on seven completed uh, one other painting to show you uh, how to put Pascal on the paintings. So we'll see how much I get done over the next two hours on two pages. Um, so here we go. I always start my process because I was well trained by a couple of very good personal artists um, to do what's called a no tear. And a no tear is a really quick study of what I'm going to be painting. It's really a value study and a compositional tool. No can means the interplay of darks and lights. And that's exactly what it is. It is a way for me to know where my values are in my painting and how they align. Um, and it keeps me on track to my painting. So um, what I used to do, I know it's very quickly, especially because I did the photo. There are Tombow pens. If none of you have ever used a Tom Bow pen, they're wonderful. I choose, I've got three different values here in grayscales and black, which allows me to um, capture, along with the white of the paper, to capture four values in a painting, which is just about as many values that you really should have for a successful painting. One side allows you. Oops, I have to use the button. One side allows you to use the Tom Bow pen as a paintbrush so that you can capture your value. If you like to do more complete sketches before you start a painting, if the other side functions as a more pointed pencil so you can get more details into your sketch before you start your painting. So, um, I would always recommend, I teach, and I always recommend to my students that they do a no plan or a sketch before they begin with their paintings because once you're starting, it's really tough to backtrack and correct your values or your composition. So know where you're going before you get started with the painting. Having said that, I'll help get lost with the painting, but at least I have some place to start off with my no plan. Um, pastels, typically you start with, as in any other type of painting, with your largest shape. With your largest shape, and um, I start with my darkest colors because it's very, very difficult to go darker once you've got pastel on your paper. Much easier to go lighter and much less chance of creating red when you go from dark to light. Papers. So it's very similar to oil painting in that way. As a matter of fact, overall, it is similar to oil painting, more so than watercolors. So I'm going to go ahead and start. I've got my pastel box here, and it's organized by values, my darkest darks, and my tints down in this corner, and then my basic color structures. What I love about this wave painting, the wave is coming forward to us. And is backlit. So what you're seeing is every way is like a scuttle. I have a teacher tell me that I think of a uh, cripple skin when you're painting a lake. The water comes up, 
it rolls over and then it goes back. So where, where the water is the thinnest, you've got a lot of beautiful color showing through it, a lot of more. You've got shadows underneath the wave because the, the light is not reaching it so much. And then you've got um, at the, your, your various colors of the foam, which to me is the beauty of painting the ocean. Of course, the, the colors of the ocean, but it's the foam, it's the drop, and it's the action of the ocean that, in my opinion, gives its character and its beauty. And it also gives each um, wave a real individuality, which it's good because you can paint whatever you want. Nobody can tell you that you're, you're, you're painting it's wrong, that a wave doesn't look that way, because a wave never, never stays still, never stands still. So I'm going to start by not putting some of my color onto this painting. I might have to write this piece. <laughs> Just taking the waves across my paper. I'm working on UART banded paper. And UART is pretty much the only kind of paper I'm currently working on. I really love it. And once you find a material, I'm sure you can copy it. Whatever medium will be working once you find the uh, material that you're comfortable with, it's hard to change. So, so I'm sticking with what I found works for me. I'm catching the shadow area. Actually, I'm going to go look at the shadow. This is the deepest shadow in this painting because if you can see my lens photo. now, You'll see that this is where the wave is collapsing on top of itself. So this area is very shallow. So I'm going to capture that with my darkest dark. And actually, the ocean in back. Just going to get the right value in. I'm not going to worry too much about the exact color that I want to get. I want to get my value in. Any, any questions are welcome. Did you say what red do you have on the paper? It's 320, which is about a medium grit. <clears throat> Um, the shadowiness, the shadowiness part of the collapsing wave are also in shadow, so that goes into deeper dark blue here. Okay. I'm not putting any of my whites in because those whites will come later. What I'm trying, what I have to, what I have to do, I'm trying to avoid it here is have space, space, and space in a painting. So I'm working on space, space, and space. So I'm working on very hard not to do that here. Paint. In the lightest lights up here, I'm exaggerating a little bit. But I'm going to make them almost green. Almost light. But I like this color. I'm going to go look at it. I'm going to do foams. Working in pastels is very freeing. 
as you can see, as you can see, it's not so very nice. So I'm going to step back, which is fun. I like what this photo does in the corners. It, it, it this this photo and grays in the corners, which pulls you in, in into the painting. So I'm going to introduce some of that gray down here. There's a term for that, and that's about what it is. So um, she wants to know why do you think uh, the gray pulls you into the painting? Um, because it's so neutral that your attention goes from it into the, the more uh, saturated parts of the painting. Oftentimes when I finish a painting, I um, don't do the corners at all. And then I just take my finger and I go to finish off the corners so that um, so that I've got pastel all across my painting. I should put a little sky color in here. I've got pastel all the way across my painting, but it's so light in the corners that people really don't get drawn to it. Let's do gray. <clears throat> I'm using 100% soft pastels. These are my newest purchase. They're called blue something. I get all my pastels from Dakota Pastels online and because it's really hard to find good pastels in stores because they're so beautiful. Mm -hmm. yeah. Now I'm going to complete the underpainted process. I'm using denatured alcohol because it dries quickly. And I'm using a brush that I don't turn off. So I'm dipping the brush into natured alcohol. And this is going to attach the color to the painting. Starting with the lightest ones because the brush is going to get a little contaminated with color. And the colors that I've captured on here are a little bit darker than what the final painting is going to be. Because what I've learned, if you learn from you learn from your mistakes when you paint, right? What I've learned over the years is really easy to lose those beautiful darks in a painting. So but having a super dark underpainting gives me the ability to hold my darks longer. <laughs> because what I'm giving myself is a, a wonderful uh, under a, a wonderful uh, source on which to paint and put my final layers of softness. Softness now is not like softness, which before anybody asks, I've never used them. Um, but, but once you get started with soft pastels, it, it, you're, you're just going to be, it's really fun because it's very immediate. So this is the I I thought I call this kind of the, the calm and the store because all of the movement is going to show up with my final layer of that scale. But I'm trying to do with this step, and I'm actually it's tough with this because the wave is coming straight at you. If it were going sideways, I would be creating my strokes to go the same way that the wave is going. 
but this 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 wave is coming straight out. So um, I'm pretty much not doing that. And I'm also not worried about the chunky stuff underneath because it it will get covered up with all the foam. Jan, we have a question in chat. What kind of liquid is she using now? Uh, denatured alcohol, which is um, it's basically running alcohol. You can use vodka. You can use water. You can use turf. You, there's all kinds of options. What you're after? Sorry, I keep forgetting the camera. What you're after is something that will dry relatively quickly, and, and, and it will play there, uh, not so much in a room like this, so that, that you're going to have your other painting colors affixed for your painting. This uh, is Jan. Yes. Uh, I do have a question. Um, yes. I work in pastel, but I usually start out with a hard pastel, one of these new pastels, rather than going right to the softer pastel. Um, is yes. there a reason that you go directly to the soft pastel? Um, I would I start my other things with soft pastel also, um, especially if it's a monochromatic application. Um, because I'll use like a a, um, a deep green or a, a deep a dark purplish blue. They're no longer manufacturing uh, um, any pastels, so I have decided that now is the time to figure out how to manage my underpainting okay. in soft pastels. You still have some old stuff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so that's a that's a big part of yes. That is a, a, a way superior way to start um, a painting because hot pastels are expensive, and when you're covering and they also fill more of the tube. So you this paper, that paper has a lot of pumice gel contour, depending on the number of the paper. Um, it's it's a 600 paper is going to be very smooth, and so you can use a 600 paper for portraiture, or if you don't want a lot of layers of pastel, I use a 320 or a four something, which is right in the middle. Um, we seem to have an audio problem. People are not hearing you well. Um, let me see what I can do. Select the camera. No, I don't want to do that. If I try saying something. Hello? Try again. Hello. One more time. Hello. Can't find a good mic. I can hear good. I can hear good. Well, I don't know what to say. Um, her hello is clear, but talking is a problem. If I talk this fast, does it help? This loud. If I talk this loud, does it help? Yes. Right now it does help. Okay. Well, let's continue then and see how it goes. Okay. Okay. All right. I'm going to get this back in my. I'm going to get this back in my pocket.
So this is the underpainting for this painting. And we're going to set this aside because it's actually kind of cool looking. <laughs> we're, going to, we're going to set this aside because um, I want this to dry thoroughly um, before I start putting the final layer of pastel on it and the final details. But basically, I've gone and just that. I've got the big shapes on here um, and basically the colors and values that are going to be in the painting may be a little bit on the dark side because I can't really do that so that I don't lose the darks in my paintings. So I'm setting these down. <clears throat> this is a way keeping under paint. That's been uh, that, that I did a couple of days ago. It's dry, so it's ready to have the final layer. That's almost the final layer of pastel. So we're going to play with this now. So and will you that not be ready to work on today? I think it should. Oh. Um, you don't have a hair dryer, do you? So um, we don't, do we? This, if, if, if I were able to set this in the sun, it would be ready to go in about 10 minutes. So I'm going to put it where we get a little more light. I like that. This, this is actually a detail of this photograph that I'm going to be painting from. Um, Cameron's over there. The Thank you. <laughs> of working um, with seascapes that you can get the big picture and then you can zero in on what makes you excited. So what I found is um, a spot on this wave that's got the, the difference between darks and lights and the wave is collapsing on itself to make for a very dynamic scene. So that's what I'm going to be working on. I'll show you on my iPhone. This is the photo that's printed out. This is the portion that I'm going to paint. It's a very small part of this larger incoming wave. It's the portion right there. And the reason I like it so much is because you've got those strong changes of value and strong movement as the wave collapses over itself and, and creates the fall and the rest is twice um, the same. So this is the note hand that I created to guide myself in completing this painting. And if you work with note hands and if you have a lot of photos on your iPad or your, um, your reference photo tool, I always, especially because there's these games and wave, wave pictures, I always put the date and the time that's on the photograph. Because then it's tell you, if I'm looking for my reference photo, I'm like 100 to 200 pictures of waves that all 
look a lot of your pen and try to find a way that you're very happy that you captured the exact details of when what you can you uh, snap the photo of your reference page. So because we're having a, a bit of difficulty with the audio, I'm probably not going to talk a lot for the next few minutes while I add my soft pastel to this painting. But please send in your questions while I while I okay, Jan. I think you need to use. The, do you have the microphone attached? Yes. Okay. All right. So they're saying it's creating some static. Um, not sure what that is from, but okay. Well, hello. We continue to have audio problems. Well, keep keep on going, and we'll address problems as they arise. So you've got a black and white. Uh, that's your note hand. Your photo note hand. Mm -hmm. I actually, when I studied under Kim Lordy, he was amazing. The thing that I learned the most from is in what times she will allow us to paint only from our note hands, which made me really realize the importance of and the importance of value. But did you convert your photograph to grayscale? No, it's just uh, dreary. Um, I didn't because what did you fall off if you never get a proper mix of darks and lights? The darks are always way too dark. You use a, lose so much detail. But when you get so can start adding a little bit of color. The one time that I, that I don't speak with dark colors is when I'm getting the highlights in early in the sky because your sky impacts everything else value wise and in your painting. I try not to use my fingers, but every once in a while you just have to. Pastel, it can be applied very lightly. The, the, the one thing that new students do is work to put, apply too much pastel at the beginning of their paintings, which causes the paintings to, uh, you, you saturate very, very quickly your paper. Stepping back, an important part of every of, of all types of paintings is stepping back while you work to see what's going on.
working for darks to lights always. I haven't put any of my whites on yet. These are all tints so far. So. I try not to use my fingers, but sometimes you just can't resist. <clears throat> Putting a little a little color in there as 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 uh, the sea retreats. I want to make sure that I soften this line where the ocean meets the sky. So can you see that it's starting to develop a little bit of character and a little bit of color? And that's without putting any of the foam in, which I'm going to start on now. I'm looking for ways for the foam to pull me into my painting. So, Maybe go a little bluer here. It's a little early to go that white. Backing away, I want to see what's going on with my painting. <clears throat> I'm having I'm having a, the the water meet the land here. So I'm capturing the movement and the volume of where the water is meeting the, the land.
And now, This is actually ahead of time. I determined ahead of time, I determined that this spot right here was going to be the highlight spot of my painting because there's a big value shift and a lot of brightness and I can create a lot of color there. I'm going to soften this a little bit with my brush. This hopefully, no, it's not too dry, but we'll see what happens. All kinds of techniques you can use to capture the beauty of the water as it's falling. I'm not gonna have enough time to finish this painting today, but hopefully you guys are getting the idea. I also want to make sure that my viewers know when they look at my painting, that water has volume, which means where it's touching, where it's touching the ground here, I've got broken lines to reflect that it's moving and, and hitting the uh, sand. Very subtle, very subtle, but you want to see that. And a little, a little blue there. Actually, I want to make this, I, I want to make this more interesting. If you're a hyper person, pastel is for you because you can go wild with it, especially when you're painting the ocean. Stepping back. actually starting to like the painting, which makes me happy. I'm actually starting to like the painting, which makes me happy. There's all kinds of ways to treat the detail. Some people use a toothbrush loaded up with white pastel and flick it on just like you do in a watercolor painting. I don't like that. I don't do it, but lots of people do. And they get a great effect. I like the challenge of getting that same effect with the edge of my Terry Ludwig pastels, which have sharp edges. They're square pastels. So you can create a straight line. You can create little, little dots of foam. Um, they're wonderful. I'm hoping you can see 
that what I'm trying to do is lead you in this way. I'm not there yet, but that's my goal. That, that's too light. So let me take that out. When I worked um, out of my home, I would, for my lunch hour, take a sandwich and go to the coast and sit and watch the movement of waves. And it's really calming. You really go back to work in a better mood and you learn a lot about the ocean and how it moves. Now I'm going really heavy with my color, right? Because the water is thicker down here. I see that in my photo. And I'm going a little warmer with my values. So the, so the painting is starting to heat up. And the last thing I'm gonna do, and then I'm gonna check and see if the other painting is dry enough for me to work on it. I think this is gonna turn out okay. I need something that's got a little bit of red or warm in it, which is why I like to put a little bit of sand in all of my seascapes when I can. So it, it gives it a feeling of being grounded, It gives me some place to put my name. <laughs> and it gives you that little bit of warmth that all seascapes need. And I'll work on other ways to get more warmth in this painting later, because I'll, I'll, I'll putz around with it and have a lot of fun with it. I really, if you can't tell, I really love doing this. And Let's see, something else I should do before. Happy with this yet. Working with your fingers is a bad thing. I try, I try very hard not to, but sometimes you just got to do what you got to do. So hopefully you can see how quickly you can develop with a strong underpainting. Um, I'm still probably going to work on getting some more worms in this. Like... Gotta be careful because it's getting light, so it's warm, but it's also reflecting the sky. So tough decision as to what to do up here. Oh, and I also want to capture the way the water is moving over here. Oh, got can't get into that shadow area. So, how long have I spent working on, on the soft pastel portion? Mm -hmm. So, just one about 25 minutes. Yeah. So, you can see that with a strong, under, with a strong under, underpainting, you can, you, I'll put another hour just cutting with this, but with a little luck, I won't overwork it because I like where it's going. One of the things I will probably do is take 
by pastel pencil and capture the fine pieces of foam. Can you talk about your pastel pencil? Yes. It's this long. <laughs> Is it just a standard? It's just a standard pastel pencil. Um, I get them. It, this is white, and it will usually work even up against because you don't want to break up a beautiful dark area with a white and go ugh. But because it's going into such a dark color, it's just a standard pastel pencil, a general pastel pencil, or whatever cheap, because they don't last long when you're working on. You need to spin around. Huh? Yeah. There you go. <laughs> You can get I, I you can get all kinds of really cool marks with your pastel at the end. You see, you really bring the wave alive once you start adding the details, which I really haven't done yet, but we're getting there. Any questions before I put this away? It's just you can get this at Michael's. You can get it at any any art store, Yvonne. This is a uh, 12 by 16, shameless plug. I'll finish it by April. It'll be in my show at Portola Art Gallery. <laughs> Good, Jen. <laughs> so. Would this be a good time to take a break or? Um, let me, yes, let's take a five minute break. I'm going to go check to see if the other thing is dry enough for me to try and finish for you. Okay, we'll resume in five minutes at 2.06. Oh, Okay, now go. So some of the people that are demo that are here at the demo live have mentioned to me that I've told you three times not to use your finger, maybe four times, but I haven't told you why. When you use your finger, it crushes the pastel into the paper in a way that basically crushes the little air bubbles that are in the pastel sticks, which are pure color with a little bit of binder. So the pastels lose their vibrancy if this is the way you choose to finish your paintings. There are instances where I just have to do it, like softening the uh, softening the, the, the line put where, where the sky needs to walk. You don't want that to be that horizon line. You don't want it to be too stark. But the best pastelists never use their fingers like I do, and I'm working on not doing it. Yes, is there a tool then that you can use instead of your finger? Arrow, right? Um, there's all kinds of tools out there. It's the oils and the fingers, but it's just the pressure itself, um, it, as well. So there are tools out there, like like a little Q-tippy um, stumps. Yeah, a stumps, just like you use with with your charcoals and and other. Um, medium, but I have not introduced them into my style. And um, just like I, I, I won't introduce the flicking of the toothbrush. You know, it's just part, part of my choices as an artist. So, okay. This painting is all about energy. So what I'm gonna capture here is this wave moving towards us. And I'm gonna do that by 
painting basically the, the more subtle color changes in the water um, and the frog, which is what is created by the action and the power of the wave coming in. So. Mm -hmm. This painting, other than the froth, is done almost. That's the power of a strong underpainting. So, I'm going to be quiet for a minute. Try a little bit of that. That's a little too green. I want it warm, but I don't want it green. So. Very touching, very touching. Pastel, soft pastel goes on super fast. And super easily. Another quirk that I have, I always want the edges of my subjects to go up at the end of the painting. So I find a way to do that. Stepping back, I see a shadow area underneath this frog. Barely touching. I'm going to need to reinforce this dark here for contrast because this is my focal point. Believe it or not, well, actually, maybe I won't make it my focal point because there's so much going on over there. But if it were, I'd make sure that I haven't lost my darks under there. Soft edges. As an instructor, I often get asked, how many pastels do you need to get started? The minimum is about 100. Mm -hmm. And then you'll want to go from there. The frog has begun. Oh, what I need to do is finish finish my ocean first. Um, I see some uh, some a green greenish in there.
Don't want to overdo it too much. Because I'm loving the value change between the way and the ocean behind it. So I just want to acknowledge slightly that there's movement in back of the wave. <laughs> Very softly, I'm gonna Pascals are very forgiving. You don't have to be afraid. At the end, you can correct your, your unlike watercolors, you can correct your um, page. Sorry. So Jan, we have a, a question in yes. the chat. When you're using your brush now, is it wet or dry? Dry. So I'm using the dry brush because I want to slightly soften those marks that I've made. And because they're far away, so you're, you're losing the detail of, of the waves. So, so you can draw. Okay. Now, I'm gonna go pretty white at this point. Um, very, very little of, of, of my ocean um, trough is actually white, but sometimes you just have to do it. Starting over here. How much time do we have? Um, 30 40 minutes. Oh, okay, good. Just starting to get some excitement going in here, right? So clearly, in what I see is the wind pushing out against the ocean. And Again, I'll get this painting home and I will work on it probably just have fun with it and putz around with it for a half an hour or so before I photograph it and put it in, in a uh, plain out frame. So how many times are you going to break the horizon line down in any particular number? Um, smooth it, you mean? No. So it's like it goes horizon line with the water. Um, at this point in the painting, you can pretty much make everything up. So I don't know that there's any rules. Um, I see it. I see it breaking. I see it breaking here. I actually made the ocean a little deeper in the background than it is in the um, reference photo. So it's problematic to to break it up too much unless I really move this which I can do. 
move the froth up. The thing about painting um, an ocean picture is nobody can tell you you're wrong. I don't like that. That's so wrong. Dry brush. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> This this photo has a really interesting lead-in mark in the foam right here, and I love that. So I'm going to try and capture that in my painting. You use the froth to move you around the painting. That's the coolest thing, in my opinion. So here we go. This is this is really bouncing up. Might have to go a little more blue. <clears throat> I'm just having fun with, I'm just having fun with these patterns that I see and um, that give the painting life. Again, much thicker down here. So that is sand in the foreground, is that correct? Um, actually, it's an upward facing wave with a shadow in the corner here. Okay. This is sand underneath the water. Yes. The water, the water is very shallow right here. Um, and that's why you oftentimes see more warmth there because you're going to see the you're going to see the sand um, moving underneath the water and catching in the water. The water gets sand in it. So you got to studying waves is fun, but but it's you know. <laughs> Very fun. This is much warmer than most of the most of the seascape paintings I do because of this. You're often gonna see colors like this in the foam. I don't know if the camera captures it, but it's got a, 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 a yellowish tint to it, a, a warmth to it. You also get some pinks, but I don't use a lot of pinks because they just feel just the tiniest bit much to me. I lost my darks there. 
with pastels, if you don't have the right color, you can glaze to get the color you need. And that's what I just did. I needed a darker blue, but I wanted it warm down here because this is still in the shadow of the way. <clears throat> Questions? I try and repeat the colors as often as I can. Obviously, you get color harmony. Someone is asking, what color did you use to glaze? This is my blue that I put on to get more work. I glazed it with this. What color is this? Green. Green. Aqua. Aqua. Turquoise. Turquoise, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Now we get to do all the fun stuff. When you're doing waves, the more the more uh, detail you can get in, the more, in my opinion, pleasing the painting. I also want to make sure that. It, that all of the, the uh, foam is not going in the same direction, which makes it more organic. So I'm making sure that right in here, Anything I don't like today that I do in front of you guys, I can always uh, use the, my handy dandy brush and fix when I get the painting home. This might be a good time. Don't like that. I want to leave a little of it, but not all of it. <clears throat> I, this is a little early to put it on um, in a usual, but I want to be able to show you guys how you can use the pastel pencil to create those subtle, dramatic pieces of froth that you want in there, but you don't want them to take over the painting like these will do when I'm done. And then it, this, this is when it gets fun. I really like this strong line through here. And it's thick because it's its own little mini piece of water coming in. So I need to make sure that I reflect that in the painting. By showing it's got value, volume. Sorry, I can't do that. <laughs> I 
that. Actually, that, that, that was not successful, but I think you saw what I was trying to do. I'll correct it at home. Mm -hmm. Using pastels with pointy edges are so nice at this stage also. Sometimes when I try, need to try out a color, I try it out here on the edge of the um, panel where you've got the white edge, which in order to frame these paintings, if you get back to paper, the only thing you really need to do is cut off that white edge if you're using standard sizes of frames. So it's quite wonderful. Um, I need to get that dark back in the bottom down here. I'm going to add a little green in here just because I can get a little warmth. You can see there's a, so much tooth still left in this wonderful paper that I can continue ad nauseum changing the colors where I want them to be more vibrant. And I see areas where I want them to be more vibrant. <clears throat> Hello.
This is where the tooth, the, this is where the toothbrush people would do their toothbrush work. And I'm not saying it's, it, it, it's a wonderful technique, but I just don't want to do it. Stepping back a lot from your painting, where, whether you're doing it plain air or whether you're doing it in your studio is so important. Otherwise you don't see your, your, your painting in the same way. I want a little bit of that blue to show through there. So let's do that. See if we can get the blue to show through a little bit differently. I like that. I don't like this because I've got a cross. So something has to has to give here. Mm -hmm. um, all I'm looking at now is shapes. I'm not even thinking about what I'm painting. I'm looking at the shapes, mm -hmm. which is always wise. So hopefully you guys are getting the idea of how, in my opinion, pastels are a wonderful, wonderful medium for landscapes, seascapes, and wavescapes. Because you can continue to layer and modify. And cool and warm. There's a really dark spot up there. I don't know why it's so dark, but I kind of like it. So I'm going to put it in and see if I leave it. I can always take it off if I don't like it later. I don't like it. <laughs> so again, I'm going to lighten it. by glazing. And then this is not a finished painting, but if it were, I hope they can hear me. If it were a finished painting, now is the time that I'm gonna take, I'm just gonna do it on a spot or two. I'm going to take my pastel and I'm going to hit it hard. I, 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 what's the word? A pasta? Pasta? Thank you. So that it's really capturing. So I want it whiter, super white. Got to get a little bit of a
So I will continue to work on this painting at home. But you can see Can I show the camera? There you go. That's it. Wow. Um, I, I feel as though this painting has lost a lot of its texture and darks, and I'm going to try and I'm going to try and bring those back when I play with it at home. This one, I'm kind of thinking I don't have to do a lot, a lot with, but I will play with it um, until I can overwork it and make it a miserable experience. That's a joke. Um, also, more highlight. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. And I'll find some place in here to put a little bit. It's weird, but I do it. A little bit of red. I may take that out and find a different place, but I try and I try and put it next to a green. Um, so it's very subtle because they're complementary colors, and if you combine them together, then it's not going to pop at you. But seascapes are looking for the eye looks for all the colors that are not there. So it's nice to be able to add them in subtly to please the viewer. I just can you show that to the camera so that we can. I just yeah just a little a little bit do it down here. I'll probably sign it in red down in the corner. That's the other nice thing about putting the the this the sand in the painting. You've some, got some place to sign where you don't have to sign on top of the water, which I prefer not to do. And um. If, if any other questions, other if not, we'll sign off. So Jan, your hands get quite dirty. Do you ever use gloves? No. However, many people do, and I have. I think it's a good thing. And most of the pastels are quite safe now. Just like with oils, they've got most of the nasty, nasty stuff out of them. However, they are drying. And when I'm painting a lot, my fingernails crack. Mm -hmm. So um, there is a product that is a natural glove. It's like a um, lotion that you can apply when you do pastels um, so that your hands and your nails are protected. Um, I also, in my studio, wear a mask. My studio at home is... Um, it's a sun room, which gives makes for great natural light, but in bad weather, I can't open it up. So I want to ensure that I don't get breathe in a lot of pastel, which is important. Um, you don't need a mask, obviously, when, you, when you're playing air painting. And it's a relatively safe medium. You just want to make sure that you don't dust yourself up too much. But this is usually how much pastel I have on my hands after a couple of hours of painting. And in my studio, I just wash them off and, and apply lotion and move on. Any more questions, either from Zoom or in the audience? You can plug your show in April again. Oh, yes. Um, so, um, Please uh, check my website, or if you wish to know more about pastels, um, um, join, join my website and, and, and ask, to be, ask to be notified when new paintings come out and you can study them. 
And in Portola Art Gallery, we actually have, which is in Menlo Park, California, we actually have three pastelists. We have myself, another lady that does soft pastel, and a lady that does watercolor covered by pastels, watercolor and pastels, which is, I tried that, it's wonderful. I'm not successful at it because I'm too heavy handed with the pastels and I would totally cover the watercolor, which is, anyway. So um, there will be a, a pastel um, seascape show in April and I'd be delighted if you all came and you can find out about it on my website, www.janfrisco.com. Thank you so much, Jan. It was a very entertaining and educational demo. We appreciate it. Thank you so much. Thank you. Done. I hope they heard it. <laughs> it was good. Thanks. It was